What's going on guys? We are back with another video. It is extremely cold out. It was like 17 degrees yesterday morning, snowed yesterday, water temps plummeting, and we're out here walleye fishing. What are we anticipating? Well, I think uh, it's gonna be slow. We know that, but uh, we're gonna just move slow, methodically, and uh, we're gonna get on some fish today. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if you guys have been able to tell from just this week's videos, but it's actually been a grinder of a week of fishing. It's been very, Easy, super easy to find fish. I can get on fish all day long. Getting the bites has been incredibly difficult in daytime hours. And uh, I'm kind of experiencing on a lot of different lakes. Maybe you guys are too, who knows. It's been a full moon, it's super cold. I've had very shifty winds and now we got this huge cold front dumped on us. Today is all about how to catch walleyes in a cold front. And really it's probably a lot of good tips for if you're catching fishing for anything in a big cold front. But we're gonna get into a lot about how to fish for these fish when it's very cold, how to set up on them from where it's very cold, and how to put in a little bit more work and have a great day in the cold front. So uh, we get a lot of requests for videos like this. What are you doing? It's tough. Um, and we're out here a lot of days it's tough and still film videos. Um, but today it's very tough, special conditions out. And uh, we're gonna do our best to catch some fish. Yeah, let's get it done, man. It's cold. Stay tuned, cold front tips. Let's catch them. Hooked up, fish on Mitchell. Feels like a good one. Ooh. It is requiring much work today. And it is, would you like me to grab the net? Nice walleye for sure right here. You want that? I'm gonna go, I'll grab it. I got a boat just staring right at it. Yeah, which means he's gonna be parked in 40 seconds. Nice fish. We are after right there. Tough, tough fishing this week. There's a reward right there, beautiful walleye. It takes a lot of cast when these fish get this finicky. Fishing very light, very slow, working the bait very methodically through that school over and over again, and uh, getting it done. We'll let that guy go, get back after it. Beautiful walleye. Hooked up. Fish on, it feels like a nice walleye. Nice walleye, Mitchell. Catch it up. Really working through these fish. It happens Very slow. Fishing. I don't know if you guys know how much of a grind it's been lately. Maybe the videos look like we're just pounding fish every day, but not the case at all. We're gonna talk a little bit about what's probably made this bite tough in the last week. And hopefully we're gonna start seeing some better fishing, but it is still very methodical, very slow fishing. A nice little northern Wisconsin chunker right there. We'll take it. He was not coming off. He was absolutely just glued to this thing. There we go. Beautiful walleye right there. Yeah. Hooked it off. We just found another pod. This one actually bit first cast, and I can tell you, when you get the big slow boom, boom, boom. Was it on the way up though? <laughs> it's a nice walleye. <laughs> Look at that. Not a giant. We'll take fish. him though. Maybe I should start this. When you pay attention. He's, a, he's a literally just about to come off too. When you pay attention to the smaller details, you can still catch them in a tough bite. By no means is it easy out right now. You got water temps that are dropping in the spring, which is obviously never a good thing. Actually, he was not coming off. We had him good. But uh, kind of paying attention to right where those fish are, making a lot of casts, slowing everything down. You can catch a whole bunch of nice walleyes in the cold front I'll let them go all right so how do you deal with these cold fronts first I kind of want to talk about cold fronts and how they affect different lakes some lakes normally get fired up in cold fronts some lakes are very slow in cold fronts overall um, cold fronts are much worse for fishing in the spring than other times of year especially when you have an upward water trend all those fish are coming up shallow to the warm water and you have that water temperature plummet, right? And that's exactly what we've had. You know, we had water temps up shallow that were getting close to 50, 50, 51 degrees even. And uh, now we're back down to 44, 45 degrees. And this does a couple of things to fish. Number one, it makes them very slow. Number two, it tends to scatter those fish. You can imagine just that glowing beam of light that's up in five, six feet of water on that sand and rock. It's nice and warm in the afternoons. Those fish are up there and loving it. It kind of all mutes it out and it becomes the same temperature as the basin, right? So generally what you have happen is fish scattering more, right? So it's tougher to get on a big number of fish typically in a cold front. 
And we'll kind of talk about that in the next informational piece we'll shoot and how you can kind of overcome that. But um, once you're on fish, basically the number one thing is to fish very slowly. And uh, you know, if we were fishing a lot of quarter ounce stuff, now we're going to eighth ounce. If we were fishing a lot of eighth ounce, we're gonna try to go to 16th ounce. And the goal is very, very slow. And I'll kind of show you guys, um, you know, another something we're doing. We're pitching eighth ounce jigs today. But when I'm getting it out there, you know, and that, that bite's really good and we're doing a lot of this real snappy, quick moving stuff, which you can get away with when the bite's on, because ultimately you want to be covering as much water as possible if those fish are really biting, right? Now, when the bite's slow and we know we're on fish, we're going to go from this big thing we do in the summer, or when the bite's really good, or kind of you see us probably working our rods a lot like that. We're taking these super light jigs and we're almost just kind of pulling them up six inches at a time, real short pops. Six inches at a time, real short pops. I want this jig just sitting there, moving very slowly, right? Over and over and over. And it definitely, if you're not used to fishing this slow, it takes a little bit of work to slow down this much. A lot of guys wanna be going too fast, not waiting for bottom, not wanting to pendulum that jig down. All the little things become much more important when you're in a cold front. And that's another thing to think about, which I think about a lot. You know, and when the bite's on, you get away with a lot more stuff, right? These fish are much more apt to bite a variety of things or a bait that's worked incorrectly. When it's cold out and these fish are very negative or neutral, you want to be doing absolutely everything in your power to do everything right. You want to make sure you're keeping that rod high when the jig's falling, making it a slower fall, and you absolutely want to be fishing a lighter jig if possible. And, uh, you know, another thing to keep in mind, I fish a lot of like 12 pound leads on a lot of my stuff. And when this bite gets really finicky, line diameter or line visibility is just another variable that I like to take away. So I might go down to six or eight pound fluorocarbon leads. I'm still fishing 10 pound braid, which I do always because it gives me a lot more feel, but I'll go down to that lighter lead and take that variable away, right? So I know that those fish have absolutely no shot of seeing that, right? And that's not really applicable in every body of water, but a lot of these very clear systems, you wanna be taking every possibility that that fish could turn away from that bait away from them, right? Most of these things won't matter most days, but like I said, you know, eliminating a lot of these smaller things, like making sure you're working the bait correctly, going down in your line size, that kind of stuff does a lot. And you know, especially when the bite's a little bit more finicky like this, don't expect every fish to go dunk on the way down, right? You know, your classic jig bite, you pop that thing up, that thing's penduluming down, fish comes up and goes boom, and you feel that big knock down the end of your line, right? Don't expect that that much. This time of year, when we get these big cold fronts, and today and this whole week really, what we've been experiencing more, those fish are probably coming, grabbing that bait out the bottom, and you pick up, and you're feeling that mush weight. And whenever I have guys in the boat, and I say, if you're, hey, if you're not sure if you have a bite, put a little bit of pressure on those fish. And if you're fishing a medium light rod or a light action rod like we are today, we're fishing the Elliott Rod 7.3 light fast or medium light fast. And we're also fishing a seven foot light fast, which Mitch is using. These tip rods both have a lot of tip load. So what you can do when you get that mush bite, you can put a little bit of pressure on that fish. And what you're gonna see in your rod tip, that rod's gonna load up a little bit. And it's just gonna be going like this a lot of times. You'll just kind of barely feel them on there. And fishing that lighter tipped rod gives you a little bit more play and it's gonna let you know that you have a fish on before the fish drops that bait. Too stiff of a rod, you're not gonna get that tip play. You're gonna lift up and there's gonna be a, you know, you're gonna tell there's fish on there and he's gonna drop it at the same time. Oh, oh. What do you got there, Mitchell? Bassy. Just feeling bassy? Oh. Look at the net. Just working through them, taking our time. I hate fishing slow, but sometimes you just have to slow down to make it happen. Beauty right there. We actually just missed two fish simultaneously. And uh, not only are they just not biting that good, but when they're biting, they're also not biting that good. No, they are not. They're doing a lot of just dropping the bait stuff like that. Well, the bite has really uh, slowed down, I'd say for a week now. It's pretty cold out. So what we're doing is just slowly move around on these nice sand flats and an eighth ounce jig, minnow, just moving it nice, slow, subtle. And uh, it's getting it done, but it is definitely slow moving. Catching fish though. Yes. Fish on. 
good. Mitchell came back strong in the second half. Yes, nice fish. Nice walleye. Look at that. Frisky one. Yes. <laughs> that thing is so fun on that light action rod, dude. Oh, we got him, though. Nice fish, too. Grinding him out. All right, guys. Just two more casts back. We got this nice fish. We're sitting here talking about what a slow time it is. It's so slow. We got like a slow moving front actually coming in and I don't know, might be picking up. At least we hope. Yeah. Beauty. What do you think? It is always more work in these big cold fronts, but if you're willing to slow down, fish a little bit harder and uh, pay attention to the little things like we talked about. You can be very successful in a cold front. Some lakes snap under cold fronts, but it has overall been a very slow week of fishing. But we're catching them. All right, so it's a major cold front right now, right? And we already know we're gonna be fishing through a lot of fish, right? The jigs and the plastics, they're out the door. We're going straight up live bait. Fat heads, some suckers, some shiners, a little bit of everything. But the main thing is, is that we know we're gonna be making a lot of casts to these same fish to get them to bite, right? When the bite's really good, Riley, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get on fish, we're gonna cast to them, and almost every time we get a bait around a fish, we're probably gonna get bit, right? And that's just not gonna be the case today. We wanna make sure that almost every cast we make is around these fish, otherwise we're just wasting casts, right? Because we're covering water so slowly, it's very important to be in these fish all the time. And one little tip I like to do a lot, so I'm kind of cruising down this brake line right now, and uh, I'm seeing a couple of fish off the left. The wind's coming straight in like this. So if I were to spot lock right here, basically what would happen is the fish would be straight behind me at this point. So I'm seeing a few fish, not really seeing the best stuff yet. So all right, here's our best stuff right here. Here's a screenshot of what it looks like. You can see the fish there. Now, I could spot lock right here and know those fish are backwards from me, right? If I spot lock, what's gonna happen? The boat's gonna swing here in a second. I just hit the spot lock button and these fish are straight backwards, which is great for most of the time. It's great for when these fish are active because it's a lot easier to fish when the wind is straight, basically blowing you right back towards the fish. So you're not casting sideways and uh, it's much easier to feel everything when you're fishing backwards. You can already see the boat starting to swing here and the tail of this boat's gonna end up facing straight this way. Now, what I like to do when it's cold, or a lot of times if it's not that windy and I can fish sideways, um, or if I know I gotta be in these fish all the time, what I'll do is instead, I know those fish are right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around the other side of those fish. So I'm gonna go about, my side imaging set at 80 feet and those fish are about 50 feet off my left at this point. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come about 60, 70 feet farther this way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide backwards 50 feet. Basically what I'm doing is I'm doing a circle around these fish and I'm trying to get them parallel with my boat on this brake line, right? So now I'm gonna start backing up, right? And my boat is going parallel with the school of this fish at this point. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get right in line with these fish and they're gonna be right off my right side of my boat. So right about here. All right, let's see if you can get a shot of the side imaging here. So here's our pot of fish. I just hit spot lock at the exact same time that um, we kind of got up on here. Can you see it at all, Mitchell? No. We're trying to get the shot here. Focusing. Yep, there we go, a little bit. All right, so that's that pot of fish. And right now you can see these are actually fish too. It's just that the fish are not moving and we're not moving, right? So I'm spot locked, we're stationary, those fish are stationary. Now if I start fishing directly off my right, I know 100% that I'm casting into those fish. If I keep those fish behind me, it's gonna be very difficult to know if every cast is in fish or if they moved um, or they're just not there anymore, you know? So a lot of times I'll kind of do this. I'll kind of slide backwards, get parallel with those fish and cast straight to them. And what you can do a lot of times is you can just kind of sit there, stare at the fish, stare at the fish, stare at the fish, know you're casting in them, hopefully catch a few. Maybe the fish move. Next thing I'll do a lot, is I'll kind of take and just burst my trolling motor sideways one direction. And what you're gonna see now, so I just burst my trolling motor sideways one direction, and uh, what you're gonna see here is even more fish on the graph like you can see right here, right? Big pot of fish right there, not sure how well it's showing up. Big pot of fish right there. And basically what this allows me to do 
is let's say I catch a few of those fish, burst that trolling motor sideways, I'm like, oh, they're a little farther out, they're a little farther back now. So it's these little things, positioning your boat, making sure you're in fish all the time, that ultimately catches you a lot more fish when the bite's slow. Oh, there's fish. Fish on. Feels like a good one, Mitchell. I don't think he's super big. Oh, he's a nice one, though. Yeah. He's a nice one. Look at Ooh, that. That's a nice fish. Look at that thing. Sorry, Luke, fighting now. I love catching them in clear water. Too much fun. I mean, we're up here in seven, eight feet of water. You can literally see the bottom where we are catching these fish. And they resort to any cover they can find. And then some of these real big, gin clear, like sandy style lakes. I mean, look at that. He took that eight ounce Google Eye to the throat. Some of these deep, clear, sandy lakes that don't have a lot of shallow rock structure or wood structure, you're looking for weeds. And even though these weeds are either dead or not growing much or very short, it's just enough cover to hold these fish this time of year. I'm gonna let them go. Awesome fish. All right, guys, well, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video is beneficial for you guys. Hopefully I didn't lose you in the side imaging tutorial. Um, I did my best to try to make that uh, a good point, and it's definitely very helpful, which is, I do that a ton. Uh, but really, if you're coming out here in the cold front, basically you're fishing slow, fishing live bait, and uh, you just gotta put in a little bit more work and you can still get it done. Yeah, we got it done. And yeah. uh, that little side imaging, Expo that you did, yeah. rewatch it like five times. So much good information in that. Yeah, how you set up on fish really can make all the difference. It's super easy to come into a spot, especially when the bite's tough and you gotta make so many casts to those fish. Super easy to come into a spot, make a few casts and say there's no fish there. But when you really put in a little bit extra work, understand what you're seeing outside MJ makes all the difference. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do next. I think we're gonna try to film something else today. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe and stay tuned for more walleye content.